Hi, this is Laura GB, and in this video we're going to look at using SQL to get data out of Dataverse and then use that SQL in a Power BI report. So here we are inside our model driven app, and the part we need from here is the URL for it. Okay, so we can see our list of all our accounts. So what we want is that line at the top there, just after the HTTPS, the org up to the dynamics.com. We copy that. And then the next thing we do is I've installed a piece of software called SQL Server Management Studio. And it's a free bit of software from Microsoft. There's a link in that. So the, there's a link below to the blog post, and in there there's a link of where to um, download this software and install it. So I'm gonna first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect to our database. So I'm gonna click the connect button. Possibly a dialog box appears when you first open, like this. Okay, and the server type we're gonna go for is database engine. And then I've connected before, so it remembers where I connected last time. So then I'm going to put in that path we copied. And then my authentication is the Active Directory password. And so then I put in the username, and then it's asking me to put in the password. So let's pop that into there and click Connect. And when it's connected up, the Object Explorer pane is populated. And I can expand the databases, and there's my database, and there's my, and if I expand tables, there's my list of tables. Okay, and I can take any table, we're going to look at accounts, so I'm going to expand my, my account. And notice, it's the internal names of these, it's not the display names. And there we are, we can see the columns, and again, it's the internal names, or the logical names not the display names. So that's all great, and I can explore, I can go and find things, but actually what I want to do is write a query. So at the top here, we can go to write a query. Control N will also bring up this window. So into here, I want to put in a query. Now, I'm not here to teach you SQL, okay? Um, there are plenty of resources out there that will teach you SQL. So we're just going to do a really simple little query. So I'll copy the code, I'll explain it slightly, but I'm not here to teach you SQL. And there we are, we've got a quick select statement. You list a whole bunch of columns. You use as to rename them if you want to. If you want to space in that name, you have, to, you have to enclose it in double quotes. And there we are, we've got our string and it's all coming from accounts. If I run that query, i.e. I press the execute button or F5, there you are, it brings through a bunch of data. Now we can see there that Contoso Pharmaceuticals is inactive. Okay, it's got a state code one and its state code name is inactive. Now I'm on a filter, so I only have the zeros in the state code column. So we can do that quite quickly in here by adding in a where statement and we put in state code equals zero. And then if I run it again, Contoso Pharmaceuticals is not included. And so therefore I no longer need my state and my state code because they're all the same don't need those in my report so i can simplify down my code to just this and all this sql code is in the blog post so i can execute that and there we are we've got a nice little simple query and this bit of software the the, the studio software allows you to write a bit of sql explore it make sure it works everything's hunky-dory and you can see what's going on so once i've got that piece of code that again we would copy and keep to ready to go into our Power BI. So let's switch across to Power BI and I'll show you the pattern that I'm using inside Power BI. So here we are in Power BI, I've got no data. So I'm going to click transform data. Now this has got a little two stage process. Firstly, we're going to add a parameter. So come into here and I'm going to go for a new parameter and I'm going to call it environment and it's text and the current value is that path which we used earlier okay so I'm going to put that into there we'll post that in there so there we are that's my part there next part is to create the query so we're going to go for new source and I'm going to go for blank query and then I'm going to go for advanced editor to show me the M code that's behind it. So the 
the code that I'm going to put in here is a pattern that I was created by Scott Sill and I've adapted just a little bit. So I'm going to take all of that out and I'm going to paste in this pattern. Okay, so in here I've got the top statement there is a the let and it sets up the data first part and it uses the environment variable in there. Then the next part down is the SQL statement. So when you're running a different query, you'd obviously put in different SQL. And then the source line at the bottom there is, is regarding, um, it puts the data first and the SQL together. And there's a couple of flags that we've used in here. So in the very top line, we had create navigation properties equals false. And in this last line, we've got enable folding equals true. They're both to speed up my query. And Scott Sewell does a great has a great post explaining why on both of those. So and I've and I've put links of those inside my blog post. So I'm going to click done. Now, SQL is a really powerful language, and on some databases, not in this case, but it could do some damage. So rather because we're running a native query, which could be doing things, it's going to say. Are you sure you want to run that query? So it's asking you about edit permission. Now you only ever need to do it once per query. So if I go to edit permission here, it, it shows you the query. Are you sure you want to run this query? And I'm going to go, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm going to click run. And there we are. We get our data come through. Now if I went back in and edited that SQL, I, again, it would ask me permission. So there we are. I've got all that. I'm going to, going to rename my query to be account and I'm going to then click close and apply now here it's asking what storage mode do I want now if I had import I'd have to set up refreshes and that would be nice and fast report really reacting well but it would be has to have refreshes I would be using um, whatever I'm logged in as as ID to view that data now if I want near real time version of my data and I want whoever's viewing the report, their credentials to be used. I could go for direct query. Now it has some issues. You need to be things, and it's worth going looking up the issues on direct query. But in this case, that's what I want. So I'm going to click OK. And again, it's just going. Are you sure about this SQL? This is the last time I'm hoping that it'll say, "Are you sure?" And we're going to pick run. I've now got some data. Let's prove that. Let's just quickly add a table. And we're going to add some data into there. Let's go for the account name and let's add their industry. So they are really simple little table in there. And what we're going to do is we are going to publish. Save on the way. And I'm going to go for a hat full of data. And there we are, it's published. So let's move across to that workspace. And there we are, there's, there's our new report. Now, before I go and view, the, if you go and view the report, it'll turn around and go, nah, can't do it, missing credentials. So let's go and fix that. And we're going to come into the accounts. And I'm going to click on the three dots. I'm going to click on the three dots. It's very keen to tell me about these missing credentials, isn't it? And we're going to go to settings. And in here you'll see failed test. So we're going to go for edit credentials. Now, authentication mode, or 2, privacy level, whatever you'd normally set it to. And then and a really important part here, report viewers want their user ID. So when somebody comes along who can't see all those accounts, They'll see fewer accounts in that report. We're going to tick that box, and that's what you should do on direct query. There's a link there to learn more. And then we're going to do a sign in. And there we are. It's worked. Okay, so my edit credentials are in there. And so let's go back to our let's go back to our workspace and let's open up. Let's get rid of that error for a second. And there we are. There's my report. Okay, so it will be if I add a new if I add a new account, come back to this report, it would appear instantly. Don't have to worry about refresh. So, in this video, we looked at 
writing some SQL, using it in a direct query report, and publishing that report, and fixing the credentials. I'm Lord GB. If you haven't already, please press subscribe. Take care now.